Hey, I'm Pastor Rod. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this message makes a difference for you. We've been studying the Lord's Prayer, a passage of Scripture that even people who don't know Jesus have heard. It's familiar because it's been used in movies, TV shows, funerals. But familiar words don't always lead to correct actions and beliefs. You know that because you've seen it. People say their wedding vows with a lot of emotion and then break those vows. Your money reads, in God we trust. And then people don't trust God with their money. People swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and then follow that with lies. Our purpose in learning the Lord's Prayer is not just to know the words, but to live them out, and to let them guide our prayer time. So I'm going to throw it on the screen, and let's say it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now a quick review, just in case you missed a week. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Begin your prayer time by thanking God for who he is, for what he's done, and for his blessings. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for God's will to be done in your life, in your family's life, and in our church. Pray God will help you hear his voice and know his will, and that you'll be obedient to his plan. Give us this day our daily bread. This is where you pray for the needs of others. If you don't keep a list, pray as things come to your mind. Then pray for your needs. Pray that God will give you strength and mercy and grace that you need for today. And now we reach the most challenging part of the prayer. Easy to pray, difficult to live. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God doesn't punish you or hold past sins against you. There are often consequences of sin. That's true. You can't relate. You can't erase that. But when you pray and confess, God completely and totally forgives. God's forgiveness is tied to your confession, admitting you've sinned. That's why this part of the Lord's Prayer is so important. When you reach this place, confess sin and pray for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you for actions that weren't pleasing to him. You say, well, what if I don't remember everything I've done? Well, if you're praying this every day, you remember. You're aware of ongoing sin in your life. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to forgive you for words that aren't pleasing to him. So what kind of words aren't pleasing to God? Ask him to forgive you for words that were untrue, lies. We have categories of lies. We have little lies. We have white lies, we have lies that don't really hurt someone, lies intended to save someone else's feelings. The Bible only has one category, lies that are sin. Ask God to forgive you for words that weren't 100% accurate. I not only want to tell the truth, I want to make sure my words lead people to believe truth. I don't want to be misleading or deceptive. I don't want to shade the truth. I want to tell the truth. If your words that aren't quite a lie cause someone to believe a lie, you lied. Maybe you've used a few of these. Well, I'm on my way. You started walking the moment they asked, where are you? Come on. You get mad if your kids do that, but you do it. Your boss asks, how's it going? And you answer, well, I'm not quite finished with that project yet, meaning you haven't started. Or you say, well, I was about to send that to you. I'll be at my computer in 20 minutes, meaning I'm going to do it as fast as I can. Well, I didn't say that, meaning I didn't say exactly those words. You missed a word. Technical truths. It's when you call upstairs and say, are you cleaning your room? There's no answer. 
Then you say, are you cleaning your room? After about 40 seconds, your kid says, yes. Well, we know what they're doing. They're playing video games. And they had to finish that game before they started doing what you were, they were supposed to be doing before you asked what they were doing. Ask God to forgive you for words that were hurtful to others. They may even have been true, but they weren't necessary. I call them loose words. I don't want loose words to come out of my mouth. The Bible is very clear. Words can be sin. Ask God to forgive you for taking the Lord's name in vain. For cursing, using the name of God. That's pretty clear. One of the Ten Commandments. Ask God to forgive you for gossip. Sharing bad reports or talking negatively and critically about others. See, we have a tendency to excuse gossip if it's true. Or because we say stuff like, well, that's just my personality. Or I live in the South. That's what we do. We have excused gossip in the church for far too long. Gossip hurts the heart of God and causes damage in his church. There is not an acceptable excuse. Gossip is sin for which you need to repent and ask God's forgiveness. It is not oversimplification to say, if the church should get this right, we would make great strides towards reaching our country. Ask God to forgive you for words that don't represent Jesus well. I'm very careful not to criticize other churches or pastors. I don't represent Jesus well if I'm criticizing his people. I want my words to accurately reflect the love and grace of Jesus. And you could look at that list and say, Rod, that's a high standard. I'll be praying for forgiveness of my words every day. That's a good thing. As you pray for forgiveness, then you'll become more aware of what comes out of your mouth. You say, well, if I can't say that stuff, I won't say anything. <laughs> yeah, we'll all be better off. As you pray, ask God to forgive you for actions, for words, and for attitudes that didn't please him. Your attitude can invalidate your testimony. Ask God to forgive you if your attitude was bad towards your parents, towards your children, your boss, your coworkers, your spouse, your spiritual authority. Ask God to forgive you if your attitude is bad towards people who are different than you. Ask God to forgive you for a negative attitude, a critical attitude, for being argumentative or demanding. Any attitude that isn't pleasing to him. You say, well, how do I know what attitudes don't please God? Well, the Bible tells you. And then, as you pray and ask for forgiveness, God will bring things to your mind. As you ask forgiveness for your attitudes, it will make you more aware when your attitudes don't please him. Ask God to forgive you for actions, words, attitudes, and disobedience. If you've disobeyed God's written word, if you've disobeyed his commands, or if God prompted you to do or say something that you didn't do, ask for forgiveness. So that's the first part of the verse, forgive us our debts. The second part of the verse is where it gets challenging. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We hear the word debts, and we think credit cards or car payments. Some translation uses the word trespasses. I think a good word is sin or offense. Forgive us our sins and offenses as we forgive the sins and offenses of others. In ordinary talk, Jesus taught the disciples and us to pray this way. Lord, please forgive me the same way I forgive others. And help me forgive others the way I want to be forgiven. So the way I'm forgiving Rod, Lord, forgive me that way. The way I'm forgiving Becca, forgive me that way. The way I'm forgiving Parker, Lord, forgive me that same way. And you say, whoa, wait a second. That's not what I want to pray. Because if God forgives me the way I'm forgiving Becca or the way I'm forgiving you, then God won't forgive me. Actually, that's correct. The only part of the prayer that Jesus explained after it 
is this part. Look what he said in the two verses immediately following the Lord's Prayer. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now look at verse 15. I think one of the most challenging verses in the Bible. If you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Oh. Recent study by the Barna Group revealed that almost one in four practicing Christians, that's 23%, have someone in their life they just can't forgive. One in four. The problem is, God doesn't give you that option. This is really important. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors is full of meaning. We pray that way because we want to be forgiven, but it's a powerful reminder. God will forgive me the same way or in the same manner that I forgive you. With the measure I give, it will be given to me. Statistically, even Christians see forgiveness as something they do in stages. First to family, then to friends, then maybe to enemies. Only 36% of practicing Christians feel their enemies are most deserving of mercy. Only 13% agree with this statement. I'm inclined to feel high compassion for someone who has wronged me. 13%. Obviously, we need to spend more time praying, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I want God to forgive me fully, quickly, and immediately the moment I pray. If that's the way I want God to forgive me, then that's how I have to forgive you. That's how I have to forgive everyone. You can't limit your forgiveness based on who someone is or isn't. Well, it's just a stranger in traffic and, and they can't drive to save their lives. I don't have to forgive them. It's just a student. It's just an immigrant. They don't even speak my language. How could they care? It's just an old person. It's just my mom. It's just my dad. It's just a Democrat. It's just a Republican. It's just someone from my past. Why does that matter now? If you don't want God to draw lines around his forgiveness of your sins, then don't draw lines around your forgiveness of others' sins. Everyone must qualify for your forgiveness. Freely forgive and freely be forgiven. Ask God to help you forgive others the way you want to be forgiven. That's a really high standard, isn't it? This is tough. This part of the prayer is a daily focus for me. I want to be rich in forgiveness. I want to be known for forgiving others. And I want to keep growing in this area. So here's how I pray when I get here. Lord, help my first response to an offense to be forgiveness. Rather than be angry, offended, or defensive, help me see each moment as an opportunity to forgive others the way you've forgiven me. Help me not to react, but instead to quickly and completely forgive the moment of the offense. How would that change your life? Can you imagine never being offended, but instead regularly practicing forgiveness? What would it be like if you could quickly forgive someone for their loose words or their sinful actions instead of letting it make you angry or holding it in your spirit? What would it be like if you could forgive instead of getting your feelings hurt when you're overlooked or don't get your way? I've seen people who've attended church for years leave as the result of one offense. They throw away years of relationship instead of choosing to forgive. I've watched church people, God's people, get mad and leave because someone parked in their parking space. Which, by the way, doesn't have your name on it. Someone didn't shake their hand or greet them. I didn't preach on the subject they wanted. They were asked to take their crying baby out of the sanctuary. We changed the coffee. 
I've seen church people get mad because members don't get special seating. I got a lot I want to say right there. (laughs) Or get mad because their connection class changed rooms. The lights weren't right. The music was too loud. I put my Christmas tree up too early. (laughs) I've, I've had church people get mad because they locked me out of the air conditioning controls, which is fascinating, which means you have the belief that everyone in our church wants the temperature the exact same as you. People don't dress fancy enough. Pastor Rod's wearing sneakers. That's true. I started wearing them about a month, month ago because preaching four times a weekend helps, it helps my back feel better when I'm, when I'm wearing sneakers. So I'm hoping that somehow the word of the Lord can still be delivered if I've got sneakers on my feet. <laughs> hey, when I go to camp with the students, I preach barefoot. God still does good things. If I did that, y'all would be freaking out. (laughs) I've watched people, uh, followers of Jesus, who post their offense on Facebook before they consider forgiveness. Don't do that. Live by a higher standard. Forgive others as you want God to forgive you. Instead of looking for offenses, look for opportunities to forgive. As I've prayed this way, I've noticed several things. Now, these may not be consistent with your experience, but I hope what I'm learning will help you in your journey. Here's a few things I've learned. This is surprising to me. This one is unexpected. But not everyone is happy when you quickly forgive. Quick forgiveness is so counterculture that it makes some people angry. A couple years ago, I received the most vicious email I've ever been sent. They attacked me, they attacked Cindy, they attacked my character, you name it. I read the email, and my first instinct, I wanted to argue, I wanted to point out where all their facts were inaccurate, I wanted to address their wrongs, I wanted to correct them for their attitude and their hurtful spirit. But in light of my daily prayer, help me forgive others the way I want you to forgive me, I considered the email for a while, then I responded with a thank you, thanks for sharing your Reflections. I receive it in the spirit with which it was given. <laughs> and then I added a few words of blessing. That made them even more mad. <laughs> when I blessed them for saying that, their next email was epic. <laughs> People want to fight. I want to forgive. It's not that I don't have an opinion. I just don't think it matters. Choose forgiveness over fighting, but understand not everyone's going to like it. Some people will question your motives, question your sincerity. Forgive anyway. On another occasion, I quickly forgive and forgave. The problem came when someone else saw my forgiveness and they didn't think I should forgive. And they didn't understand why I would forgive that quickly. They didn't want me to communicate love and kindness. They wanted me to pronounce judgment. They were angry because I was too forgiving. You know, I decided if I'm going to be accused of something, that's what I want to be accused of. Even though everyone may not understand, forgive. Forgive others the way you want God to forgive you. Each time I pray through the Lord's Prayer, I pray and I forgive people. I call them by name. Some things clear from my spirit quickly. Other times forgiveness is a process. Rather than hold on to that offense, I call their name every morning. Lord, I forgive Rod. I choose to forgive him. I will treat him and act towards him with love and forgiveness. Help me forgive today. As you pray to forgive, here's what will happen. God will bring to mind things that need forgiveness applied. God has reminded me of past hurts, words that were said, things that were done. Sometimes I find myself praying to forgive people for things that happened years ago, things I've held in my spirit way too long. As God brings them to mind, I pray and I release them from my anger. I call them by name. God, I forgive Jackson. Forgive me, Lord, for my unforgiveness. 
regardless of what they said or did, I don't want unforgiveness in my heart because when you hold it in your heart, it comes out in ugliness. You say, Pastor Rod, if God does that, if he brings to mind everyone I need to forgive, I'll never make it to work. Good. Allowing God to lead you through that process is life-changing. As you pray to quickly and completely forgive, God will give you opportunities to put that prayer into action. One morning, it's been a long time ago, as I was praying, God, help me forgive others the way I want you to forgive me. The email alert sounded on my phone. In the middle of that prayer of forgiveness. Now, I didn't stop to check my email because I don't want to spend that, send that priority message to God. But when I finished, I opened the email. And it was an apology from someone who'd made anonymous threats against me and my family that caused a lot of anxiety and uneasiness. He confessed that he was the source of the threats and asked for my forgiveness. Let me tell you, that's challenging. Standing up to speak, knowing someone's vowed to hurt me is an interesting experience. I learned trust and to rely on God's peace. The human side of me also tends to notice every time the door opens. So do me a favor, stop that. <laughs> Don't leave unless you have to. Anyway, this guy made threats against me and my family. Now, I've learned to deal with it when it's me. That's part of the deal. It's a little more hard to process when it's my family. We had a family meeting. We walked through what to do if he followed through. We increased security at the church. The police department stepped up patrols in our neighborhood. And now he was apologizing after all that. My first reaction was anger. I wanted to fire off a pretty tough response. And then God whispered in my spirit, what did you just pray? How do you want me to forgive you? And I sent an email of forgiveness. I thanked him for his confession and expressed my forgiveness. Was that easy? No. Was it right? Absolutely. It was right. How important is this? Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, which seems to cover about everything, right? If you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. In other words, interrupt your prayers and forgive. Make forgiveness an absolute top priority. Understand, unforgiveness doesn't hurt the other person. It hurts you. You're truly free when you forgive. And as you learn to forgive and be free, God will give you opportunity to minister to others who are held captive by resentment and unforgiveness. You can point them to the same freedom you've found. If you've confessed your sin, if you've committed your life to Jesus, you know what it means to be forgiven. You've experienced the peace and the joy and the freedom that comes from being fully, completely forgiven. Jesus taught us to pray. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In your daily quiet time, as you pray for forgiveness, choose to forgive anyone who's hurt offended you. Forgive them so you can be forgiven by God. And remember, the way you forgive them is the way God will forgive you. Give it a try. Start praying that God will help you fully, quickly, and completely forgive the moment an offense occurs, instead of getting mad or offended, forgive. Instead of making an angry phone call or firing off an angry email, forgive. Instead of posting your criticism, anger, or frustration on your Facebook status or angrily reacting to someone else's status, forgive. Instead of telling everyone you know how bad that person is, forgive. 
Forgive before someone even asks, or if they never ask, be known for your forgiven heart. And best of all, receive that same kind of forgiveness from God. How different would your life be if you walked in forgiveness every day? If you reacted to every possible offense with quick forgiveness? What would it be like if you looked for opportunities to forgive instead of opportunities to be offended? God predetermined his response to your sin would be forgiveness. Could you make that same decision in advance of the offense? Could you actually choose to forgive before someone hurt you? Is that possible? Here's my question. How would your life be different if every time someone hurt your feelings, every time you didn't get what you wanted, every time someone made a decision you didn't like, if every time your response was forgiveness. What kind of witness would that be to your friends, to your family, to your coworkers? If an entire church family decided to live that way, we'd be focused on our mission instead of distracted by offense. We did that. We changed the world. Would you bow your heads with me? I want to pray for you today. And I want to pray for you. If there's someone in your life you're struggling to forgive, I mean, it could be a big thing. It could be from years ago. Or it could be a really current thing. Someone said something they shouldn't have said or didn't say something they should have said. They did something. And you're... You're nursing that hurt. You're replaying the hurt and getting angry every time you think about it, every time you talk about it, instead of forgiving. Lord, would you help us? Because we see in your word that this isn't an option, that we've got to do this. We've got to process through this. Because we, Lord, we've done a lot that we need to be forgiven for by you. And we recognize we can't escape the truth that the way we forgive others is the way you will forgive us. So I pray, Lord, that in the next few minutes as we pray together, that some people in this room, some people watching online will have a breakthrough of forgiveness. And they will will bring an offense or a hurt to you they'll give that to you and they'll forgive that person and they'll experience the freedom that comes of forgiving so we can be forgiven in Jesus name